of course, I, we can't finish this interview without talking about that very huge facility, the hospital. Mm -hmm. So much money gone into it. Mm -hmm. Well, we are now told, well, apparently, it was going to two, just two people. Two people were the ones who had their <laughs> names as what yeah. <laughs> owners of the facility. Yeah. I mean, how is that possible? You know, um, you own the hospital? If I own that hospital, I'll be the richest one in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> so why is your name on the document? Or at least, why are there reports of your name uh, on the on the document. I, I think the, the registration document is now uh, public, publicly available. So mm. everybody, I'm sure you've seen it. Uh, the University of Ghana approached the former president, late former president, Grant Atamos, yeah. and said to him that we would like to build a teaching hospital for more than 50 years. We've always wanted to build a hospital. Can you help us? We want to move the College of Health Sciences, uh, move most of what we do from uh, Kolebu to this place because we wanted to assure that uh, the people doing health sciences interact with other uh, parts of the university. So, and he thought it was a great idea. Uh, we've been thinking about how to fund, I mean, of course, you can't have such a college here without a hospital. So, how, how, do, you, how, do, you, how do we do it? In the course of the discussions over several months, uh, it came up that the government was uh, quite keen on sourcing facilities for building new regional hospitals. So the government agreed that, okay, we would use some of the resources to build this new hospital for the University of Ghana. Uh, and after that, the then Deputy Minister of Health, Rodrigo Metaluno, engaged with us to see how this business could be done. Mm. We were very lucky the President uh, defied uh, position from even some of his own um, colleagues uh, want to do it because he believed in it. When the hospital project began, we set up several committees to ensure that uh, by the time the project is completed, we will be ready to run it. We're not going to wait for the things to be finished mm. and then say, okay, now what do we do? Yeah. So we set up committees, they were advising on uh, client management, they were advising on research, they were on gov advising on governance and so on. And this was done over a long period with consultation. The committees were very large. Mm. And uh, one of the things that came out of the governance discussions was that when the hospital is finished, it should not be a part of the system that is managed by the Ministry of Health. It should not be a part of it uh, so that it does not get bogged down by the, the uh, bureaucracies and everything associated with the public service. At the same time, it should not be simply another department of the university okay. because very likely you would treat it like any other facility within the university. Mm -hmm. uh, so when there's no money, there's no money and then that's it. So that's why between us... As in between yourself and Roger Metal, be, no, no. No, between the University of Ghana okay. and, and the government. government of Ghana. There was a steering committee that was appointed to manage the project. The steering committee was chaired by the Minister of Health so the vice chancellor and the co chair. And the co chair. So the two people were chairing it Ministry of Health, uh, University of Ghana. The steering committee, this, all this from the committee, from the committees, uh, we're looking at the technical things, went to the steering committee. It was accepted that when the buildings were ready, when the hospital was ready, there will be a special purpose vehicle a company that will be empowered and resourced to run this hospital independent of the Ministry of Health, mm -hmm. independent by its own by the University of Ghana. That's, that was the agreement, you see. So it wasn't again and the society woke up one day and said, oh, uh, what this is, that this is how I'm going to run it. No, it came from a committee and was accepted by the steering committee. And then all of that was, uh, went into 
an agreement signed between the University of Ghana and Ministry of Health. The agreement said that uh, we will, uh, the, government, the university will own it, the government will provide resources for five years. After five years, the facility should be able to generate enough income and run on its own. Fair. We accepted all that. Within the university, the governance people who were working on this one said, in order to assure the independence of uh, the management of this hospital, the board of the hospital should not be chaired by the vice chancellor. That was their recommendation. This was two years before I left office as vice chancellor. So even if we we're going to set up a board, I knew as vice chancellor I would not you be eligible be to, chair. to chair it. Interestingly, the construction was delayed. Hmm? The contractor delayed, I think, the challenges with payments from government and so So it was, it was some delay. So the board was not put in place, but the principles had been accepted. When the university decided to set up this special purpose vehicle, the university lawyer then went to Registrar General's department to put in motion the process for registration of this uh, special papers vehicle. She came back and said, we need at least two directors to be the initial directors for this company. The council of the university authorized me and the project manager, Professor Lawson, to be the initial directors with the understanding that when the project is finished, that they will appoint the other directors. So the two of us... But did that mean that you were going to remain a director or you, your names were going to be taken off? Once I think the university de decide whether it was going to keep you as a director or going to uh, remove you. I signed as an initial director because I was vice chancellor. Okay. Mm? With the understanding that when the, pr the project is completed, the university will then, the council will then decide on who are going to be the directors. The directors. Okay. This is just initial director. Mm -hmm. So being an initial director didn't mean that you'll be a director later. Mm -hmm. So that's how it was. I saw in the publication that uh, uh, was attributed to the Deputy Minister of Health, sorry, the uh, Deputy Minister of Health, yes, that uh, Roger Bettelini was one of the, it's not true. So it was, was just one, you? was one of the initial, it, it was not true. Roger became a director later when the University Council uh, put together uh, the, the board of directors. But at the time, it at was the just time, you. It was just the two of us. As in you and who? Professor Lawson. Professor Lawson who and was the project, Who was the project manager. So the, two, the project manager and the vice chancellor became the initial directors. Okay. All uh, recommended by the university council. You get it? So we signed as... Now, why the Ministry of uh, Health decided that there were three initial directors and announced that publicly, I don't understand. The document showed only two names. What motivated the minister and his deputy to announce to the world that there were three initial directors, I don't understand. You see, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. uh, if they had seen this document, then clearly they were lying. If they had seen it. They're describing them as liars? I said, if they had seen the document, and the document had two names, but you came out and announced a third name, which didn't exist on the document that you were referring to, the only thing that can be used... To justify the, such an action is to, to, is to, to call you a liar. To, to describe such an action is that you lied. So, with this context, it suggests they, either, they were either ignorant or just no, wait, lies. I'll, I'll come to the ignorance part. You saw two names mm. on the form because the, the deputy minister said he had seen, said they had gone to register journals and retrieved. Whatever document he retrieved on the initial directors showed only two names. Showed only two names. And so if you are telling the public that there were three names, when indeed there were only two, and that may be, maybe, okay, we can be magnanimous and say his eyes deceived him. <laughs> you see? 
his eyes deceived him. Mm. But if he if he insists that there were three names, then he lied. He lied to the public. So why would he lie? Precisely. Again, I would speculate on the, what what would have made him. No, but what would be his interest in lying, it is he lied. lying about you? Whatever it is, he lied. He lied. He lied. That's. I, I can imagine what your headlines will be tomorrow. You know, he lied. Now, the issue becomes okay. So. Uh, this company is created with two different directors. The contractor comes to us in April 2016 and says, are we finishing the work? Uh, government says that we should be prepared to hand over, etc., etc., etc. So if we should put it in place, it is. In uh, June 2016, it becomes necessary to put in place a board that would manage the hospital along the lines that have been agreed with the Ministry of Health. Professor Lawson, as the project manager, is asked to bring names in line with the principles that have been established. The principles said the board should have an independent chair. The, there should be at least two people for the Ministry of Health representing government on the board. The vice chancellor should be a member of the board. Then there should be four people from the private sector, preferably a lawyer, a, a finance person, and then two people from uh, pri the private health sector. Okay. From the private health sector. So, Professor Lawson proceeded to bring names for us to consider by the University Council. That's how we got names of uh, uh, people that did fit to these categories that we saw from the private health sector. Uh, I think for the private we got uh, uh, Dr. Odui from Akai House and Dr. Aye from Port a Clinic uh, at Ektema. From the finance, we got uh, Ms. Karina Kiwi Tano, uh, who is the chair of the board of Atl First Atlantic Bank. Mm -hmm. And then we got uh, Ms. Kizita Mensa from a private legal firm. And then the university was supposed to bring the vice chancellor and then the uh, provost of the College of Health Sciences. Professor Lawson asked me, why don't you become the board chair? And I said, I'm the vice chancellor. And he said, in two weeks time, you will not be the vice chancellor. So you have known this project. This project was your idea. This project, you, you initiated it and so on and so forth. You know all the challenges we've been through. You know where the problems are. And uh, you've had ideas about how we can solve those problems. So I think, I said, well, it's up to the University Council to. He wrote to the University Council with the names. I didn't send them. He sent the names. He recommended that I be the board chair and the other places filled by the individuals and so on. The council accepted it and made me the board chair. With the fact from the date I stepped down as vice chancellor. As vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. see. It was obvious to me from the beginning that there were a number of people uncomfortable with me being the board chair. Which people are these? Oh, some of them came from the Ministry of Health, uh, different places within the university and so on. It was obvious that some people were uncomfortable. But I took the position that there's a job here to be performed. Mm. There's something that we had to do. We've got to find $48 million to finish this project properly, phase two. So forget about individuals bickering about whether they want to be chair or they don't want to be chair and so on. That's how I left office. When we had our first board meeting, uh, most people came. Subsequently, there were a number of people who were not showing up, but the core always uh, we made a lot of progress in terms of uh, making arrangements. The, the for core the, being you and uh, the, the private sector people, the, okay. the, the, the uh, provost for health sciences, uh, Professor Lawson himself, the lawyers, and so on. So, the, what was going on? The Ministry of Health had not submitted its names. You know, the, the board was functioning. We had made progress in terms of recruitment. We had done interviews and we were about to, I managed to get uh, uh, approval from Family Service Commission to, to hire these people. The Public Service Commission had allowed us to, mm. you know, all of this in the first year. 
when the new government took office, the uh, Minister of Health, the first, one of the first things he did was come to the place, you know, uh, to see what was being done there. Uh, we took him around, had a meeting with him, provided him all the documentation on the hospital. The one thing that struck me was the fact that uh, in that meeting and in subsequent engagements between the minister and the hospital, not once did they acknowledge me as the board chair. Not once did they even acknowledge that there was a board, you know, that there was a board and that I was the chair of the board. Not once. So it was nice to pretend that this hospital stood there and didn't have anybody in charge. There was no board, there was no board chair. If you look at even communications between the ministry and the, uh, the university, the, the, the university and then the project management unit, no reference to the board. You didn't deem it necessary to respond to some of these things? Oh, I did. I did. Uh, I, I, I did at least on two different occasions to draw the attention of the minister that there is a board. You see, many of the things that you are asking Professor Lawson to do can only be done through the board. So you did in writing? Or it was just verbal? At, at, at a meeting. Okay. You see. You know, so the, the, the long and short of what I'm trying to say is that uh, a lot of the concerns expressed uh, about the hospital and a lot about the, about the intervention that we saw coming from the Ministry of Health and uh, the lack of response to that from the university tells me a lot. It tells me that, you know, this issue about ownership is, was something that was agreed many years ago. It's written in black and white, an agreement between the government of Ghana and the University of Ghana. So anybody that says there's an issue of who owns the hospital clearly is refusing to acknowledge something that had been properly done. Huh? Um, and why, why would that be the case? So, so, of course. But even more telling is the fact that in all of these discussions and so on, while these things were going on, the Minister of Education wrote to the uh, Vice Chancellor of the University asking him to dissolve the board, the board that they had sort of to dissolve the board, to uh, dissolve the project management unit. Effectively, you know, uh, what I saw the minister telling the university was sack the board chair. Sack Professor Aite. Sack Professor Aite. You know, that, that's what it was. So the day it was, it was brought to Dr. Matthew Poku Prempe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what, what yeah, I do you have any personal issue with him? I don't, I don't have personal issues with anybody, you know. Mm. I don't have personal issues with anybody. Do you think he has a personal I, I, issue I with him? I don't know. I don't know. And indeed, if he did, I wouldn't care. <laughs> we hope you understand. Mm. I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it's just one that I know. I don't know him. You know, I've been to meeting with him once or twice, but beyond that. I don't know him, so I don't know. I don't. I'll be surprised if he have what any grievance against me, you know. But clearly, uh, he had a discussion with somebody with the, from Ministry of Health, or, and uh, the letter was quite clear, you know, Gary down the board. So you were sacked? No. So before anybody could do anything about, it, I realized. Look, I said to myself, um, we came to build a hospital. We finished it. The buildings are there. We finished with a part of what we came to do. Do I have to be here for the next part? No, I don't have to be. I told myself, I've done my bit. Whether the records show it or not, the hospital was built in our time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whether the records show it or not, 
the hospital was built because we, as a university, did ask the government of Ghana, through the president of Ghana, to help us build a hospital, and we did it.